Assalamu alaikum. Let's offer our Fatiha for absorbing and and this um, these Quranic passages, and also in gratitude for Quran to the secret heart of our peers. Al Fatiha, Allah Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Rahmanir Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in Ihdina as-siratal al mustaqim Siratal ladina an'amta 'alayhim Ghayra al-maghdubi 'alayhim waladdallin Amin 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 and may we also uh, apply it, um, embody it, that we um, live it. I mean, not just understand it, but this is always the way of Islam is also to uh, to bring it out into our lives and um, and become it, this becoming, the be. We follow the original command of Kun to, to be. So inshallah, may we be in, in, in the best that Allah has revealed. I mean, mashallah. It, it was interesting that in, in 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 what we read today, we we um, there were three uh, human beings who received uh, children miraculously. I mean, in this account, and that is Hazrat Maryam, alayhi salam, Hazrat, and because she did not have a partner, so it was a miraculous. Um, birth and that is it said but obviously the angel gabriel bought the brought the fertilizing breath uh, to her and then hazreti ibrahim and his wife sara uh, and then um hazreti um Z- uh, zachariah also received and also was old like abraham and his wife baron it's so interesting so, um, you know, it, and, and yet these were great prophetic lineages that sprang from them. So that's also, as Allah says, you know, I, I revive the earth when it is dry or when it has gone through winter, I, I quicken it and, and, and the seed sprouts and, and produces abundant vegetation and uh, everything, life flourishes. So we should be also thinking in that way about ourselves and sometimes in the Ramadan when we feel also so barren or down or, um, you know, the fasting or just self-reflection and um, that, you know, out of that ground, out of that will come, inshallah, new life. And and that's what Rumi said, you know, uh, the tavern of ruin, you know, the when the body also is... <clears throat> uh, destroyed, then uh, it, birth comes. So uh, I thought those were three interesting examples of that. When you feel compelled to pray, when you feel compelled to turn to God, you know, what a great thing. And um, alhamdulillah, may, may we also you know, attain that. Obviously, each of us here has felt comp- that compulsion because otherwise we, we wouldn't have, you know, taken hand and, and joined a, a mystic order. So we, Allah has compelled us toward uh, himself. Yeah, that's, those were the ones uh, who did not demonstrate any kindness. We, that, so their rebellion against the all merciful would indicate that they themselves did not uh, demonstrate any mercy or kindness or forgiveness, all the qualities of Rahman, overlooking faults of others. And so, um, yes, I mean, maybe, but maybe it's not Rahman who, uh, who, you know, has them be chastened and learn their lesson, but it was because of their rebellion 
against uh, compassion and kindness and, and the womb of unity of humanity and, and the womb of, of goodness. Those are the ones, you know, so, uh, but it's not necessarily Rahman chastening them. <laughs> you know, and as it said, if we create our own, we create our own chastening. It's our actions uh, that, you know, create the, the fire. You know, that's what Effendi says in the story of Harun al-Rashid, where uh, he sends Bechlul, the holy fool, down to check out the fire and see what it's like. And Bechlul comes back and he says, but, you know, you're sovereign. There is no, there's no fire there. Everyone brings their own. So it's just that we are given the divine permission to create either and to bring about paradise or the fire. So we're only going into taste, whatever it might be, the you know, consequences of, and it's only the most insistent, it's not errors or oversights or, you know, that then, you know, we find and we say astaghfirullah or um, even it says that, um, you know, uh, even uh, atheists or someone who doesn't believe in Allah, but who does good towards humanity will be received in, you know, with Allah's merciful embrace and, and forgiveness. So these are people or, or, you know, subtle beings or jinn or that we don't even imagine. We can't even in our kind of dervish minds imagine maybe the depth of whatever it is, decrepitude or so, of course, everything to become good. So the fire there is actually a healer. It's a healer. It heals, you know. Yeah. Well, we don't speak lightly, of course, of, of all of that. And that's why even the Quran chanters, when they chant those passages, they lower their voice, you know, almost in awe. It's a kind of, you know, oh Lord, you know, save us and save humanity from these threats. Save, save us. So it's, we can't, you know, we're not just spouting off about the fire, <laughs> how great it is, not at all. Although, you know, save us from the fire. That's always our prayer. Save us from our own, the, the, the um, you know, our own uh, actions. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. This is all Allah. <laughs> this whole thing is Allah. So it is also, you know, um, you could say Allah who is within these or, or experiencing in some aspect uh, these, the, the, even the suffering of these lives. And it is Allah who weeps, um, you know, at, at, at these events. So it's just that life is so much bigger than we imagine, you know, and of course it, there, it would be completely unjust if life ended at death and, you know, and some people suffered and some people were triumphant and other people escaped and, but um, only, you know, everything within eternity uh, that the whole thing reverts to an the eternal level and, um, and, and a level of, of reward and a level of reconciliation and a level of forgiveness and a level of reunifying. And only in that large, vast perspective can, you know, we, as you say, tolerate that, okay, well, someday those beings who suffered so much, uh, it will, they will look back and if Allah asks them, have you suffered? And they will say, no, Lord. They will not, you know, so it will not leave a mark um, upon them. But this is the nature of our life, you know, that is like a, a, a dream. It's like, in some sense, uh, people have called like a projection. Shweb talks, Ibn Arabi speaks of that onto a screen. So there is a nature of unreality, it doesn't mean though, you know, again, it's such a, a subtle 
uh, balance because that doesn't mean that we just look at all suffering as, oh, this is just a movie or something. No, we participate just as Allah is participating. But there's some level of our own understanding that knows that, um, you know, this is an unfolding of divine um, drama, but it's not in itself ultimate. So there, there is a place, even in those who are suffering, that is beyond suffering, you know, even though they might not consciously be in touch with that, but they also are actors. We are all in that sense actors in, in the drama of creation. And our, you know, true self is beyond, is beyond creation. So, you know, but sure, it, and that's, you know, kind of an explanation. And then there's a place where we can't explain and we just, but we can't accuse either. You know, that's, we, and some people lose their faith, you know, exactly. Or maybe they never had faith and, you know, um, say, you know, how could God become bitter, you know? And so may Allah preserve us from that. As terrible as what people undergo on earth, uh, may it completely, you know, may we be protected from misinterpreting that or falling into despair. Mm. And um, inshallah, may it just, you know, deepen our faith and, and deepen, of course, our, our hauf, our awe, our reverence, you know, our awe, but also increase our help to people, you know, that we're here to serve, we're here to help others and to, to, you know, extract, inshallah, be able to serve to extract them from situations like that, like our sister Robina is doing. I mean, she's very much in that work of, um, you know, trying to give a refuge for people yeah. suffering like that. So this is the Quran, it brings up, it's just our life. And so it's so important that we contemplate our life on these uh, levels and with these examples also. So, yeah, I mean, look at the prophets, how they, and you know, this is just, they're just touched on, but how they suffered, you know, these exalted beings who came with God's word of good news, and they keep saying that, they, so they were, re the good news was rejected, um, and, and how they, they suffered, but you know, there's always, it, as Allah said, I think in yesterday's passage, you know, never allow the suffering of the, the faithful ones to, um, to go un, unresolved or, you know, yeah.